Mark May joins us now. The right to the guest line here on Fox Sports 910. Staying cool, my friend? You staying cool? Just trying, guys. It's pretty hot out there. It's, what, 100, over 110 for like the last two weeks? It's got to cool down sooner or later. It's got to remind you, it's <laughs> kind of remind you of your days, uh, you know, uh, in, in Maryland. Is, was it, where'd, where'd you guys train when you when you were with Redskins? Where'd you guys train? You, Lovely you, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's right. 95 and you. Yeah. So those three days. It's kind of like those three days, right? Because yeah, I always hear you, you old timers, you guys always talk about the three days, right? <laughs> <laughs> we did three days back in the day. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Jimmy B, I got to tell you what kind of guy Rock is. So I'm at this country club having lunch. Okay. And he comes up, and he, he comes up and talks to the table. And guess what? When we go to pay the tab, Rock picks it up. Wow. That's kind of how it rolled, Jimmy. Wow, man. I mean, that's big impressive. League, that's big that he is big time. Yeah. Well, he big times me almost every day when we're on the show. Yeah, well, a lot taller. But, uh, hey. <laughs> Hey, we want to get, get your opinion on something, Mark, before we yeah. dive into college football. So we were talking about Tennessee, the $8 million fine, you know, the, the, uh, the infractions that, they, that came down today. And Jimmy feels that there's just a booster that's going to write a check to make up for that $8 million. And I'm making a case that that doesn't happen anymore like it used to. It used to happen 20, 30, 40 years ago, but he thinks it still goes, still on, goes on where someone's going to write a big fat check for four, five, six, seven million dollars $6, $7 million. I, I don't think that happens. Do you? Yeah, look at the NIL money that's out there right now that's donated by the boosters. They're going to step up and pay this. In Tennessee, they think they're on a roll right now. Yeah. They went to the Orange Bowl last year. They were 11-2. and two. They won the Orange Bowl last year. They think they're on a roll. They think they can contend with Georgia now in the SEC East. So some boosters definitely going to step up. I'll tell you right now, if I'm Jeremy Pruitt, I don't step in the state of Tennessee for the next 20 years because all the scholarships of 28 that they lost and now the money they lost. And usually the NCAA, they don't penalize you money. It's usually just, you know what, we're going to take away your scholarship. Yeah, they We're going to put you on probation. You know, this is like the first time that I've seen in a long time where they came down with a sledgehammer saying, hey, you're going to write a big check. Well, one of the things that I did read about the NCAA, they are trying to move away a little bit from, po uh, from the probation so they don't penalize the kids that are playing now and make it more so they penalize the school. Does that make sense to you? No, because somebody's going to write a check like we talked about. <laughs> it's not going to penalize. I agree. I agree. Gonna say, yeah, I'm just going to donate another four or five million to the program and just yeah. write it off. Yeah, exactly. That I mean, that's that's the way the game is played, especially in the SEC, because football is God in the SEC. That's it. That that's all there is to it. Mark May joining us here, Rock and Jimmy B, Fox Sports Nine Ten. Uh, what happened in Northwestern uh, is is sad, Mark. Uh, I don't know. How how much of it's true, but it must have been uh, enough to, to get him fired. And I'm just surprised that I know they got the defense coordinator in there. He just got on the on the squad, what, January? Yeah. But they retained all the assistant coaches, too. That doesn't make any sense. Why do you think they did that? To not lose everybody? To lose the players? No, they, they hired like five new, new assistant coaches this past year, plus the, the defensive coordinator. But here's the thing that got me. In this day and age, and even though some of it happened years ago and some of it happened a few years ago or like 10 years ago, in this day and age with a camera phone that's a cell phone, yeah. with social media, that this didn't leak out anywhere years ago. And the other thing is, if the head coach didn't know, because I know Pat, he's a quality guy, he's yeah. a fellow Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. and the thing is, he's had nothing but a squeaky clean resume throughout his entire playing career and coaching career. You never heard anything negative about the Northwestern program off the field. And for somebody to have this happen, it's, uh, I'm sitting back thinking, it's like, Nobody told an assistant coach, and if they did, that assistant coach didn't tell the head coach, and he says he didn't know anything about it, and I kind of believe him because just going by his track record, he doesn't have any dirt on his track record. Right. And here's a guy that's going to probably be out $40 million, and I don't think he's going to sit tight on that. I think he's going to end up suing the university and getting his money before they suspended him on Friday for, for, for two weeks without pay. So how do you go from a suspension with two weeks without pay to being fired like 48 hours later? Which that's something else that it's still like I'm scratching my head over. All right, if that's the case then, at the end of this season, and we all know that coaches uh, are hired to be fired, if indeed this is cleared up somewhat, does somebody go after Fitzgerald then right away for next season? I think so. I think if you look at some of the higher academic institutions like a Stanford or a Vanderbilt, as long as it's cleaned up, because they're going to say he's coached at Northwestern for 17 years. But I think Northwestern might have looked at the last two years where he was 4-20. and 20. That might have had a little bit to do with it. Yeah. But here's the guy that the alumni love him. They've got an alumnus out there, alumni out there, that's going to write an $800 million check for their new stadium. Now, 
I don't know if he's going to continue to do that without Pat Fitzgerald being the head coach of Northwestern. So that's something that they have to look at down the road. But I still think he's going to get an opportunity to coach, whether it be in college or the NFL. Mark, we had some discussion this week uh, in advance to uh, the Pac-12 Media Day next week and what may happen. The network deal, okay, that's going to happen when it happens. I know that's a big deal. But do you think the fact that that has not happened is, is holding up the expansion or uh, some of the teams that may leave the Pac-12? Absolutely, because you don't know what check you're going to get at the end of the year to next few years. If it's going to be a smaller check or if it's going to be a larger check. And a lot of these schools are sitting back and waiting. I think they're going to start making the move very, very shortly, probably at the end of this summer. Okay. And some schools, you look at San Diego State, they wanted to go into the Pac-12, but they can't, they can't get out of their contract and their conference. So they're having difficulty doing that. So we're going to find out in the next couple of weeks of this expansion and teams and conferences growing. And I think it's going to change a lot of the, the landscape of college football over the next couple of years. It's going to be strange to see Oklahoma and Texas playing in the SEC. You know, can they hold up for that SEC schedule? You know, they can play that one game every once in a while, but I don't know if they can hold up and play the eight or nine game schedule in the SEC. Uh, let me just follow up quickly on, on the TV contract because the ACC announces that they're going to run games now on the CW. So if the CW is jumping into college sports like that, is that another possibility then for the Pac-12, or did they miss the boat on this one as well? I think they missed the boat on this one as well because there's only a certain amount of dollars out there and they can't spread it all around. I think they're going to have to be very fortunate if they get into a nice contract someplace with somebody, whether it be on Amazon TV or something like that, or if just a streaming streaming deal with somebody. I don't know right now. Right now, they're at the bottom of the bin because they really don't have a major contract and whoever signs them, they're going to get a deal because they're going to come in and shortchange them. If, 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 I'm running, if I'm running, let's say if I'm running Fox and I come in and say, well, you know, we gave the Big Ten $800 million. We're only going to give you $200 million. What are you going to say if you're the Pac-12? I'm not going to take it. It's either the $200 million or nothing. Wow. In regards to the Big 12, you know, with their expansion, which I don't know if they want to stay at 14, uh, you know, when you lose Texas and Oklahoma, do you think Arizona, Arizona State's a good fit? I do. I think where they are located, I think particularly Arizona State, they would, they would love to get Arizona in the conference because of basketball. But with Arizona State, you look at the demographics, you're getting the entire Phoenix area. The media market here is a lot bigger than it is in Tucson. And I think the Big 12 may have to go after that. The new commissioner has been nothing but aggressive the last year since he stood up and said, we're changing things in the Big 12. We're going to be aggressive and we're going to go after things. He's been nothing but spectacular at doing that. They lost Oklahoma and Texas. That was before he took over. But look at the way that he's changed the landscape of the Big 12 already. And they're still going to probably add another team or two or three. What about Colorado? Yeah. yeah. I think Colorado, it all depends on the Dion factor. They want the Dion factor there, but if Dion produces and they win six games this year and they get to be 500 this year, possibly next year, that'll be a huge attraction for, the, for that conference because Dion brings the swag. No matter how you look at it or what you say about it, if you like it or not, he brings the eyeballs, he brings the swag, and he brings the talent. I'm with you on that 100%. All right, then take me to ASU and then Arizona. Uh, Kenny Dillingham, the job that he's done so far coming in, and also now how Jed Fish has uh, begun to really rebuild the Wildcats. If you look at Arizona State, in my opinion, everybody said, yeah, look what they did in the portal. Look at the transfer portal. I'm saying, people, it's not the number of players you get. It's the quality of the player that you get. You know, if you're getting players that are from the MAC conference and stuff like that, that doesn't impress me. You know, I want guys that were competing for jobs other places, that were starters other places, or just got beat out, that are still hungry, that want to come in and have a job and start someplace. The numbers don't, they don't factor into me. You know, if you look at USC, they were really picky when they went out there and then transfer portal and the players that they brought in, they got nothing but quality players in. Bodies just don't matter. And if you look at the program right now, Dilly Dilly's got a lot to do here. I know everybody's pumped up. He's a local guy. Everybody wants to get behind him. But show me on the field to play, and we'll find out this fall. This is a team, when I looked at it and I broke it down, they may be a two- or three-win football team if the wheels don't fall apart. If the wheels fall off the wagon, they may not win but a game or two. If you, and it's got to start off early. And if you look at their schedule, the way it's set up, they've got a couple of wins that they should get. But will this team be ready to play? And Arizona, Jed Fish has done a terrific job of bringing names in. He's gotten more wins now, but now he's got to turn the corner and get bowl eligible. He signed in some great prospects. He just got another kid, I think, from the Valley. What, a defensive end that was one of the top 10 defensive ends or something like that in the country? So he's doing a great job bringing in high school recruits. Now it's time to develop them and get them better and get them on a winning track. A show that you're very familiar with, and that's ESPN's College Game Day. And there's been some talk, uh, you know, obviously, with all the changes at ESPN, the 7,000-plus lay uh, layoffs Sorry. and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
do you like where the show is going with the Pat McAfee's in there? And, and if Kurt Herbstreit decides, okay, I'm done because of his obligations with Amazon on Thursday and everything else he does, if he left, would the show still have still be a hit? I think Reese Davis has done a fantastic job as the host, and I think he'll keep it together. But losing David Pollock, that was a heck of a personality. I yeah. think he was better than Pat McAfee. That's my own personal opinion. Great. And Herbie May League, a lot of people don't know, Chris Felica left. You may not know this name that well. The Bear, his sure. name is The Bear. Fox, yeah. That's yep. all the gambling stuff. He and Herbie have been tighter than a hole in a donut throughout Herbie's career. He's just, <laughs> he's just a research guy. He's left and he's gone to Fox. Now, does that tell that tells me something. So if Herbie decides in the next year to, you know what, I'll just stick with the Amazon gig, because Felica's still working the Amazon gig on Thursday nights with Herb Street. So if he decides that he's going to leave, it may be in the next couple of years, which would be strange to, to look at that cast and see that Herb Street's not there. He's been a long time guy there. Corso's not going to be there Two. Any longer. Pollock's already out of there. So it's got to be interesting to see what they do. And the rumor's not true. I'm not going back to ESPN. Oh, oh come, come on. Come on. Man. Really? How's Coach? Have you uh, spoke to Coach? You guys still got you got the podcast going yeah. still? Yeah. Yeah, we're still waiting on the podcast because they're changing some things around with the podcast. I talked to him the other day. He's just, he's kind of bored, I think, right now because he texts me all the time. It's like, I get a text at like 4 o'clock in the morning. It's like, Coach, it's like 4 a.m. here. It's like, well, it's 7 here. It's like, <laughs> Which, <"Hey." laughs> you know, you know, Mark, you, you see Coach Holtz quite a bit on, on more political stuff lately. You know, Fox will bring him in. You know, he gets asked to do a lot of that stuff lately. Oh, he's ripping the Band-Aid off big time. He doesn't care anymore. He's like, he's like at that age, 84. He's like, you know what? I'm going out guns the blaze. I'm going out my way. I he's doing the Frank Sinatra right now. Oh, it's good. I've got to tell you one quick story before you let me go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I'm riding, in the car, I'm riding in the car the other day, and I turn on the radio, and I'm listening to your show, and I'm starting to get a play-by-play, step-by-step on how to approach the situation if you're flying in the plane and want to get in the Mile High Club <laughs> by Jimmy <laughs> G. I almost drove my car through a doggone red light and got T-boned by a tractor trailer. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? I was laughing so hard. Brad, he's like, you got to wait till the cart goes up and the flight attendants are in the front. Then you sneak in the back, and I'm like... Oh man, he's got the blueprint down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, pal. That's I'm, great, I'm Mark. glad that you heard that segment, kid. Oh, thank you so much. So. Hey, Mark. Thanks as always, buddy. Have a great weekend. All right, you too. Take care, guys. Mark's, Mark's May Mark. joining us here again. The podcast <laughs> at the crowd's line. It's coming up, of course. Uh, two-time Super Bowl champion, National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Famer. And uh, you can follow him on Twitter at Mark underscore May. So we appreciate him taking some time. Always, Lives here in the Valley. Always. Kind of looking at the state of college football. 